Lovely day for rugby here in Perth, Western Australia for more week one action of the Build Corp Super W. Today, the Western Force women take on the Melbourne Rebels women. I'm Andrew Swain, joined by Wallaroo, Molly Gray. Molly, not a cloud in the sky here today. Hello, hello. No, there isn't at all. But, you know, there has been a strong easterly blowing here all day. But unfortunately... There is no sea breeze to cool things down. Yeah, very hot here. Well, Mick Collis is pitch side and he caught up with the teams. And it's just an historical time for women's rugby. What's it like to be a part of it? Yeah, no, it's really awesome as a player and also as someone who's part of um, female development at Rugby Victoria. It's, um, it's awesome for me just to see the change um, that's happening. So, no, I'm really excited to get out here today with the girls and um, see what we can do. It's a new team, new competition. How, how hard has it been to gel in the lead up to this game? I think that like a lot of the girls um, are obviously very keen for this competition, so I think everyone's on the same page in why we're here. So in terms of gelling, I think we've come together um, really quickly. Uh, obviously, getting to play together is your, your biggest way to gel, so um, we've had a few trial games and now today will be the big test, so really excited. All right, all the very best and good luck today. Thank you. Cheers, Mick. So also joining me is the captain of the force, Trillene Pomari. Uh, Trillene, great to see the Western Force name alive. How important is this competition for women's rugby? Oh, it's very important. I think it's a great stepping stone and a pathway into an elite level into the Wallaroos now. So I think it just opens up so much opportunities for us in the West as well, being so far away from the eastern states. So I think it's great for us. And what are you expecting from the Rebels today? I think they'll be, they'll be tough. They'll be good in contact, I think. We've just got to have to muscle up against them today. And you've got some young, exciting players in your team. Who should we keep an eye on today? I think Courtney Hodder will be one to watch. Um, she's on the wing for us. She's just exciting. She's fast. She's agile. Um, another one will be Zion Todima. She's um, debuting today at this level. And they're only young. They're only 16. So it'll be good to see them out there and have a go. Fantastic. Well, all the very best today. Enjoy it. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at the two sides. Melbourne Rebels women first up in that forward pack. Look out for Sam Homewood. She uh, is the community sevens manager for Rugby Victoria and really looking forward to seeing what she can bring to the forward pack. What about in the backs, Molly? In the backs, Kendra Fell is one too. Yeah, Jane Cararoa as well as the skipper. And, uh, and Davis and Welty and Benedict, really looking forward to seeing what they can, uh, they can bring. And then in the Western Force, well, Antoinette Jago, well, she was born in Ireland, a supreme triathlete, now trying her hand at rugby, also represents the Cottesloe women's team. And, and then in the back line. And this one is Kendra Fell. Okay, so fun fact about her, she had a baby six months ago. So I am, I, it's, it's incredible that she's even out here playing. I think it's just such a testament to her. Quite incredible indeed. So looking forward to this one, coached by Sebastian Delport as well, the Western Force women's side. And we are almost set to, for teams to enter the field here at Cottesloe in Western Australia. Harvey Field and Jane Cararoa leading the Melbourne Rebels women's side out. And she is a very strong player indeed, Jane Cararoa. She was announced as the skipper of this strong club at the same time as the Melbourne Rebels men's side skipper was announced, Adam Coleman. So it's great to see them integrating with the men's side as well, Molly. I think it's really great to see the teams integrating together. You know, that's what you want. And I think when the, you know, when they have raised these women's team, everyone wants to be a part of it. Women want to be there with the men. And it's great to see that they're supporting them. Trillene Pomare, we heard from her a little bit earlier. 
She won the Sue Roberts Trophy for the best female player in WA last year and is a Wallaroo, so look for her to dominate proceedings today. Quite a few Wallaroos on the field today, Molly. There is, there is. We've also got Rebecca Clough. She is a Wallaroo. She's been to three World Cups, so she's incredibly experienced. Uh, Would bring a lot to the field when she does come on. And they also have out there Vesania Tafua, also a Wallaroo, made her debut last year. Yeah, out on the field. Rebecca Clough actually starting from the bench today, which is quite surprising considering her experience and both sides just huddled up here in Cottesloe. It's a lovely suburb, Cottesloe, in WA, by the, by the ocean. But as we said earlier, no sea breeze to speak of, which normally cools things down, so it's very warm conditions indeed. It's going to be a hot one out there for them today, I think. Hot on the field, all right. We've already seen some hot action on the field last night. New South Wales getting it done over Queensland. And so we're almost set for a kickoff. Annie Fagan. Ball in hand and the Western Force women get us underway for round one action of the Super W. Big shot immediately by Talfa. So the Rebels women looking to just consolidate here to settle things down. Oh, again, the defense is enormous from the Western Force women. Their first two tackles of this game have been bone crunches and the Rebels look to clear it downtown. Back there, Madeline Putz stepping out of one, two, and finally brought to deck on the Rebel side of halfway. Offload going well here for the Western Force women. Here's Pomade. Gets it out to Kerry Opa, who's brought down just near the 10. Fagan again having a look, gets it away to Reed. Reed looking for the support and finds it. And this will be the first try coming up for the Western Force women. What a start. Vicinia Telfa. Incredible start for the home side. They did so well. The force came out absolutely firing and scared the hell out of the Rebels women, I think. That was really great work there from Vesania. Yeah, it certainly was. It was a lovely little show and go. Got the arms free through the line, did Fagan, and then Tara Reid running onto it and found Telfa flying through. Aggressive start from the Western Force women, Molly. So aggressive, and she was sitting right there in the pocket supporting her player the whole way as well, so she made it really easy to, uh, to collect that offload. Five points to nil. Just a minute and a half gone. Lining up, Kendra Fell, as you mentioned earlier, Molly, had a baby six months ago. So incredible effort to get fit and play in this competition. And she adds the extras. So the score is seven points to nil. The Western Force women leading the Melbourne Rebels women after just two and a half minutes. Vicinia Taufa scoring the try, as you said, running great support lines. She is such a strong player, has always been known to be a really powerful back rower. With the ball in hand, she's generally unstoppable, and she's got such a raw talent. Cormick, one of the stars of this Rebel side, gets us back underway. And a bit of a fumble there from the Western Force women, so will come back for the scrum. It'll be a Melbourne Rebels pa a feed. Just a bit of a silly pass there by Barnes. I think she should have just held onto the ball and taken it in herself. But she was a little bit hesitant there in front of the Rebels and did a bit of a blind pass and it didn't pay off. So the Rebels have got the ball now. Crouch. 
So Cormick will feed the scrum. And it's a little untidy. They finally get it back, the Melbourne Rebels women. And here's the skipper, Carroll. A little wraparound play there from Robinson. But the defence is good. And this force women's side. Cormick standing over it now. A little untidy. Looking for the turnover and earning it. So the Western Force women defensively really aiming up. They are. They're coming out so strong. The Rebels really need to pick it up a little bit, though. They don't seem to be supporting each other as much as they should when they're going into contact. You know, no one's latching on to anyone. Someone's hitting the ground, and there's just no one there. So the Force were always going to get the ball back. So a line out here inside the Melbourne Rebels half for the Western Force women. Clean win at line out time. Once again, Cope goes inside to the forward runner in Talfa. It's been a little bit of a combination now. Again, Cope getting her hands on the ball. She is very good. And here's a nice little run from Hodder. Getting on the outside. Hodder still going. Hodder will run it around. She was one to watch pre-game. And she'll score the try for the Western Force women. She was lightning. 17 years of age. 17 years old. How incredible that she is out there versing women who were upwards of 38 years old. I think that is amazing. But she is so fast and so strong and she just pushed everyone off and really worked hard then to get under the sticks. Yeah, it was breakneck speed there from Hodder. The little in and away. Couple of good fans there as well on some bigger players too. Just speed to burn from Courtney Hodder. She was a seven sensation at age group level. And the extras are added. So it's two tries to zip. 14-0 the Western Force women leading the Melbourne Rebels women. And Courtney Hodder at 17 years of age. That jersey is hanging off her. It is indeed. What I love about these um, these young players, the 16, the 17 year olds, is that they play with no fear. They're really not scared. I feel like sometimes the older that I got, the more scared I got. <laughs> <laughs> but the young ones really are fearless. Fearless, all right. She clapped it on, did Courtney Hodder, so we're back underway. And again, Talfa. Just flying into the line. No regard for a personal safety. And here's Cope. It's been turned over though. The Melbourne Rebels women. A little bit loose at the breakdown from the Force women. And so the Melbourne Rebels women going for a run. Here's Lelay. It's one off stuff from the Rebels women at the moment. The pick and go. Just trying to poke through the line was Masters. Again, the pick and go good. Linda Patton now. And standing there is Robinson to Carrara. Dummies. Looks back inside. Counter up coming from the Western Force women now. Strong counteract from the Western Force women. They turn it over. And Paseni Grenell comes away with it. The defence rushes up, though, on the Western Force women. Whistle block goes. Will come back. Was knocked down by the Rebels women. So we'll have a scrum for the Force. But... The pressure at the breakdown from both sides, Molly, is immense at the moment. The physicality that the force are bringing to the field today is, um, is it's so strong and it's so powerful and it's really knocking the Rebels about a bit. I think they really need to group things up when they're going into contact here so they can hold on to the ball still. Set. 
Here comes the feed. The Melbourne Rebels women's scrum. It's pretty willing at scrum time, in fact, for both sides. Here's Pomade. Goes inside to Tara Reid. And Barnes had to step into scrum half coat. Kicking across field to Hodder, who picks it up again. And Hodder, you're not going to catch her. This will be her second try coming up inside 10 minutes. Wow. A star of the future is born, Courtney Hodder. What a player. That was incredible. Cope's kick over the top. And, um, and she was right there to catch the ball and just like pedal to the metal and just got under the sticks again. Let's have another look at it. Oh, wow. And she just got on the outside of Benedict, who couldn't get to that ball on the full. There was oodles of space out there on that left wing. And Hodder, well, she was one to watch. It was Pomare who said in the pregame that Courtney Hodder would be one to watch. And my goodness, two tries inside 10 minutes. She's definitely looking to be quite a dangerous player out there. You do not want to have to verse her in space because you will lose. Kendra Fell adds the extras. So, 21 points to nil. Three tries to the Force women. Talfa with the one and then Hodder. Australian seven sensation. She competed in the world school sevens and now trying her hands at 15s. I think she's going pretty well, Molly. I think she's going brilliantly. <laughs> what I am loving is that when you get the sevens girls crossing over into 15s, you find that a lot of them are a little bit timid, a little bit scared by 15s. But once they get out there and they realise that it is a whole other ball game and it is an incredible game, and she's going to have a bright future. And so, Barnes going for a run. Shifting it along the line now, the Western Force women, and Karnachan has to clean it up. A little bit untidy. Looking to get the arms free. Pomare has to go back and pick it up. Gets the offload away again. Here comes the rush defence from the Melbourne Rebels women. Western Force just trying to score off every play right at this moment. Bell gives it back to Cope, who hoofs it down into touch, just on their side of halfway. Good kick by Cope, but it was very, it was very disjointed then. You know, it, it didn't seem like anyone really was taking responsibility and taking charge and just moving forward. Everyone just wanted to get rid of the ball and make something happen too quickly. They really needed to just slow down the play then. And I think that's why you saw Cope get the ball, kick it out, so they can now slow it down with his line out. Yeah, settling things down and goes to the back. So clean win for the Rebels women. Robinson takes it into contact, gives it away to Milne. Penalty, Cormick goes quickly. Here goes Homewood. Got the ball away to Masters. Cormick goes in digging. And Coretta. Again, penalty advantage for the Rebels women. That looked like it was a high shot. The penalty advantage awarded. Cormick's pass didn't go to hand, but here's a chance now for the Rebels women. Benedict can't quite hold on to it. So we'll come back for the penalty. Cormick really trying to just slow things down and pr control proceedings for the Rebels women. I think that's what they really need to do. I think both sides really need to slow this down a bit. I think jitters, it's the first game of the entire season. Everyone just wants to get out there and show them what they've got. But they've just got to remember that it's all about going forward and gaining ground. You've just got to slow it down to move forward. The other thing is they're down 21 points to nil. So they just need to settle themselves, the Rebels women, and try and consolidate a little bit here, which is what they are doing. 
Cormick will take a shot at goal. Georgia Cormick. Almost poached by AFL. But rugby is where the, the heart lies for Georgia Cormick. We saw her. She was an outstanding performer at the Brisbane 10s for the Rebels. And she was telling us in at Fox Sports a couple of weeks ago that AFL nearly got their grasp on her, but she's come to rugby. And she hits it well. And that'll be three points for the Rebels. So 21 points place three. They're on the board, the Rebels. They'll be happy with that. I would be happy with that as well. Any points on the board are good. Come away with points for, for pressure and territory. That's what you need. Good crowd here at Cottesloe rugby club and the sun is shining it's really beating down it's hot out there and Cormick can't quite hold on to it so it's a turnover once again they're going out to that left wing again here's Pomare stepping in and taking the ball out of the grass of that girl hotter but it's knocked forward, so we'll have a scrum to the Western Force women. Great to see the support here for the Western Force. Back in a national competition, it's great to see. Oh, we always want a crowd. We've never really played in front of big crowds before at this national level. And I think now with the announcement of the Super W, people are getting interested, people are going to come and watch, and the girls are going to put on a great show. Yeah, this is the first time the Super W has been played. It replaces the Women's National Championships, which was held over just one weekend. So now it's, it's great. You'll actually get to see women will be able to recover after a game, Molly. Yeah, that's exactly right. Back in the day, we used to turn up, we would play three games on day one, two games on game two, um, day two, and then one on the third day as well. And it just ruins your body. Well, no more of that. We've got the Super W now, so here goes Cope again. A real handful for the Rebels. Pomare gets it wide to Kiriopa. She offloads to Puts. Into the 22 they go. Pomare again to Cope. Straightening and straightening straight through. The cover defence is good from the Rebels. Brought down just shy of the try line. Cope went straight through. Penalty awarded. Reed standing over it. They'll slow things down here. It's been played at a breakneck pace. It's going now that quick go. Kendra Fell gives it to Jago. It's a little bit loose at the breakdown. It's a high tackle, will come back for the penalty for a second, and I thought the try was awarded, but obviously didn't score it. Phil once again taps and goes. Here goes Reed for the try. Another one for the force. She went straight through and dotted it down. That was great effort by the force there. I think when you get that many penalties right in front of the line, you're always going to get that try at some point. And that was really good by the girls there to not take that quick tap, to slow it right down and send one of their big, strong players right in, straight over the line. Oh, the good thing from Reed there was the footwork at the defensive line. They rushed up out on her, but couldn't quite get their handles on her, so... 26 points plays three here in Cottesloe. And Kendra Fell standing over it. This is real trouble for the Rebels. Four from four for Kendra Fell. 28 plays three. 
the Western Force in real control. And the Rebels women really haven't fired a shot so far today, Molly. They haven't. They don't seem to have found their flow in this game yet, but that's okay. First game of the season, like we said before, I really think they've just got to slow things down. That's going to be something that will come in their favour. Cormick sends it down towards the 22s, Jago, and oh, big shots. What about the tackle? It was a double team with Welty there and Cope straight through, looking for the support. Finds it in the way of Taufa. Looking for Hodder. Oh, it's going to be a hat trick, is it? It sure is. Courtney Hodder. 19 minutes gone. She has three. Get it to Courtney Hodder. She will score a try. What an effort by those two girls, Taufa and Hodder. Incredible. Taufa so strong. We said that before. She is a powerful back rower. And she got that ball and she just went for it. She's so fast. You can see here, she just put her head down and off she went. And then when the players started to close in on her, she was looking around and Hodder was right there. Incredible. Well, not only that, they had numbers there as well. If Hodder doesn't score it, there's about three other Western Force players there who could have. The chase was good by Casey Homewood, but... Just not good enough for Hodder, though. Not good enough for Hodder, indeed. And what about Tui Cope? Really controlling proceedings. She's always been quite a strong player. I came across her for the first time last year at the National Championships, and she... Oh, sorry to cut you off there, Molly, but a charge down from the conversion. Wow. You don't see that every day. You do not. Good work by the Rebels. I think, you know what, when they got that, when they double teamed that girl and that big tackle um, after the last try, I think it must have put a little bit of confidence in them. Yeah, Welty got right underneath and put on a big shot. So the Melbourne Rebels just need to consolidate here. They need to slow things down. They can't get their hands on the ball. Force women with 63% possession. Here's Hodder, the three-try hero. Just 17 years of age. Three tries in the first 20 minutes of the Western Force season. Taufa again looking for the offload. Gets it away. It went backwards. And yet the Rebels just off their feet. So a penalty. And they just can't get their hands on the ball, the Rebels. And they're getting a couple of penalties that are piggybacking the force down the field. It's making the force... It's, it's making the force's life quite easy here, that they keep getting these... They're giving these penalties away. Yeah, cheap penalties, piggybacking down the field, and, and now they get a chance to attack inside the Rebels' half. And Cope, wow. It's been a real start today. She's laid on and had a hand in pretty much every try this afternoon. And Barnes wins the line out. It's a little bit untidy and accidental offside. There you have it. So it'll be a turnover. Finally, a bit of salvation for the Rebels women. They'll pack a scrum. Their scrum looked fairly solid so far today. It's been tough though at scrum time for both sides. It has indeed, it has indeed. I think, you know, I think it's quite an even match here with the Force and the Rebel scrum. Cormick looking to feed. Has scored just the three points for the Rebels. Again, under immense pressure. They're not making life easy for themselves either. Pass is just not going to hand. 
is Homewood driven in the tackle. Cormick with the box kick. Puts it high. It's not bad either. It'll sit up though. And now the Western Force looking to counter. Lovely run there from Puts. They're keeping the tempo high here, the Western Force. And now Paseni Grenell goes through, gets the offload away to Fell, to Reed rather. It's untidy though, here's Welty. She's isolated. They win it back. Masters looking for a pick and go. Penalty to the force. Number three, obstruction. And they're just getting in each other's road. It's really a little bit disorganised for the Rebels this afternoon so far. It is a little bit disorganised, you're right. And I think, you know, when they do try and get that ball out wide, their passing just isn't up to par at the moment. And I think it's just going to be exposure to this level of this type of game where it will get better, but they really do need to work on it because their passes are slowing it down and it's just getting a little bit scrappy. But they will get there. Yeah, he's hoping the Rebels have got some great young players in their team. A great mixture of youth and experience. So, Alice Tonomaivau comes on for Anna Milne. The quick tap for the force women. Telfer again. Here's Pomare stepping, going herself. Offload is good for Karnachen. They're close. The force. Oh, here's Hodder. Oh, that's four for Courtney Hodder. She stepped. She so showed some fancy footwork and dived over the line. She is absolutely unstoppable when she gets that ball. You know that she's going to do something, especially if it's that close to the line. And she has a knack of being able to see even the smallest holes. Yeah, a bit of conversation going on here. A red card. Restart with a penalty to goal from halfway. Goodness me. Funga Lilo will sit out the remainder of this match. Well, if the task was hard for the Rebels already now it's a hundred times worse this is not what they need hotter scores the try and the call was that she led with her feet okay so she must have tried to slide in there to get okay i understand now i was a bit confused before when they said that she led with her feet not the smartest move by the rebels a red card. Wow. That is tough going for the Rebels. Kendra Fell looking to add the extras for the try. They are good. It's 40 points to three. 27 minutes gone. And Courtney Hodder, she has four tries. She is an absolute star for the force today. Look at that. Footwork finds the hole, goes straight through, dives over. And Funga Lilo. Did lead with the feet there, so she'll sit the rest of the game out and it'll be a penalty on halfway as well. Tui Cope coming up to take restart us. So, wow, what a bad result for the Rebels. Cope finds touch. Down near the 22, it was a good touch finder. She had to give it everything to get it down there. Yeah. 
She's been really strong today, Tui Cope. Hand in everything so far. She has. She's strong, she's physical, she's fast. She's got great footwork and she's got a really great kick as well. She's definitely an asset to the fourth side. We're all talking about assets to the fourth side. Courtney Hodder, four tries. She's touched the ball six times, scored four tries. There you go. If only we could all play like that. Oh. This is a supreme performance from the fourth so far. Fell. Goes in Pomare. Cope. And gets the ball to Telfa. It's knocked down. Play will continue. For the force, his cut fleeing out the back door. And now puts stepping into the 22. It's a hit through the line. The pick and go is good from Kariopa. And this will be another try for the Western Force. Zakia Kariopa scores the try. You can see that the force are really taking advantage of that red card and that missing player on the field there. And they're just coming at the Rebels. They really are, and exploiting that short side. Same way rugby, it's pretty simple stuff really from the Western Force, but it's paying huge dividends. And Kelly Opa scoring the try there. And you can see there that she just fended the Rebels player off so easily. They've got this habit of trying to tackle up really high, but girls are getting smarter here when everyone's all about the fend. If you go high, they're going to try and fend you out of the way. And Zakir Kariopa is another 17-year-old in this Western Force side. So, the 17-year-olds... Am I getting too old to play? Is <laughs> well, that what we're getting at here? There seems to be so many 16 and 17 year olds out there. It's fantastic to see. They're scoring tries, that's for sure. And that is what we want. The future looking bright for Australian rugby. What about the kick? It's good, but doesn't quite have the legs. So the score will remain 45 points to three. Just half an hour gone. And the tries have been raining here for the force. And there's not a cloud in the sky, Molly. There isn't. This is great rugby playing conditions. And, uh, and the force are definitely used to this heat. So they know what it's like to play in this weather. Victoria, probably not so much. Yeah, they're used to four seasons in one day down in Melbourne. Over here, heat. Hot weather. Here's hotter. I'm surprised she didn't score a try then. Four tries today. Tui Cope has to go in to scrum half and they shifted along the line. The force, that offload once again is good. But the Rebels diving in there. The ball was free and they've turned it over. Great work at the breakdown from the Rebels women. Pick and go now. Masters. In fact, that's Tapawai picking and going, and Masters there. So, a few replacements on for the Rebels. Cormick goes quickly now. Here's Catarock. Doesn't go to hand. Not in a realistic position to regather the ball. Yeah, deliberate knockdown, so. It'll be a penalty, and you'd think the Rebels would just like to slow down proceedings here. I want to see the Rebels slow themselves down, but I also want to see them spread out. They're boxing themselves. Can't find touch. Georgia Cormick just rushed that kick. So it'll be a 22 restart. Oh, it's a knock-on, in fact. So it'll be a five-metre scrum. Wow, how did that happen? There you go. A let off for Georgia Cormick. That's probably a better result, you have to say, than a line out which has been under pretty immense pressure. Their line outs have been under pressure, but their scrums match the force quite well. But they did lose one of their starting props. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And Janetta Caretta there. Starting at tight head. Homewood looks to be off the field, so tap away on the field now. Chance now for the Rebels 
can they get some points on the board through a try? Penalty. They tap and go. That wasn't a legal tap for mine. You can't do that. It's not touch footy. You can't tap it off the knee. You cannot indeed. They should know better than that. Lucky for them, though, they still have the ball. Cormick standing over it. I look for the big runners here. They're big ball carriers. They really haven't had a chance today to line it up. Here goes Masters. Bang! Masters bouncing off the first tackle. Looks for Robinson. Picks it up off the bootlaces. This is good hands. And this will be a try. No! Great goal line defence. And knocked on, but we'll come back for the penalty. 23 offside. Cormick looking to go quickly. They do. The cross field kick to nobody. That's really unfortunate for the Rebels. And Ford is dragged into touch. Oh, the kick from Lele to nobody, unfortunately. I'm not too sure what she was thinking. She had her biggest players standing right next to her and you just saw what happens when Masters gets the ball and she just hit that line so hard. That is what the Rebels need to be doing when they are that close to the line. Well, Welty wasn't on her wing, unfortunately. Otherwise, it would have been a clear run to the line. Not straight the throw. So, again, the error is compounding for the Rebels. Just the little error is really hurting them at the moment. That was their best opportunity down in the Force territory, but come up with nada. And you can see that they're putting a lot of pressure on themselves as well. We all know that they've got that red card, so they are out there with only 14 people. And it's just those things, their ball handling skills, their ball security, they've really got to tighten it up a bit and just be a little bit more disciplined if they want to get somewhere in this game. Punch. Yeah, really tough for the Rebels the afternoon so far. 45 points to three down after 35 minutes. Pomare couldn't quite get the offload away and now looking to get on the outside was Putz. Ball goes forward and it'll be a Rebel scrum again. So the Rebels just getting an inkling, a bit of territory here. They just need to compose themselves, Molly. Composure is key, especially when they're sitting on that 22. Kayla Welty, again, just lingering out on that right wing. Time in the opposition, 22. The Rebels women, two and a half minutes almost, to the Force women, just 38. But look at the score. So they really camping down there Crouch. the rebels Binds. just need to get some pay they do they do they're so close they do have a good scrum so hopefully they can do something with this yeah, fungalilo off the field red card for leading with the feet so Really unfortunate. They have to play this game with 14 on the field. Three minutes to go Crouch. till half time. Coming inside, inside. No clear gap goal. Short up. Cormick goes quickly. We'll have to come back though. Back Not on the mark. Got a little bit excited there. Again, quick tap. Looking for the big ball carriers. Jago was over it. Oh, pumped. They are pumped. The Western Force. Unfortunate for the Rebels. The carrier had no support. And so they've given away the penalty. 
the Rebels just can't seem to get it right today. They had the two players running together. They were holding on to each other as well. And then they just disappeared. So when she's hit the ground, there was no one there to just get over and protect her straight away. So no wonder the force exploited that. And they got the ball back. Antoinette Jago right over the top of that. Barnes wins the line out. She's been good in the air today. Coat looking for the inside runner, Talfa, but it went forward. So with just a minute and a half to go in this first half, the Rebels again have a scrum, centre field, and an opportunity. And look at where they are. They have been here for quite some time now. It would be nice to see them do something with this field position. How important is it for them to get some points for before half-time, Molly, just for morale? I think for morale's sake, it's, it's so important. They really need to get some points on the board. They are a good side. You can tell that the Force are more experienced, but the Rebels do have a lot of potential out there. They've got a lot of great players. They've got youth, they've got experience, they've got strength, they've got speed. They've got it all. They've just got to piece it together. They just can't score points at the moment. That's a better scrum. But we'll repack. Yeah, the, the force side really experienced. And they will give a couple of the bigger teams in, in Queensland and New South Wales a real shake this year. They will, and they always have. Every time at the national championships when anyone ever comes up against the force, they are so strong and scary. And you know that they're going to bring a strong game. The physicality today has been immense. Master's not happy. Just stands up. Looking to repack. I'm loving seeing Masters at hooker. We went to the 2014 World Cup together. She was a centre back then. Is that right? Converted to hooker. Cormick taps and goes this time. And here's a chance for the Rebels. The pass is not going to hand, though. Robinson doubles around. Advantage is being paid. Oh, big shot on Tapaway there. Heavy contact. The pick and go from Linda Patton. Now they're looking for runners. Homewood just bobbled it slightly, but made the game line. Patience key here for the Rebels and skills. Kararoa. The penalty's awarded. They're offside. Cormick looking to go quickly. Does so and looks up. Oh! Was off the mark. She got hit late after the whistle. She's tough, though. They know what they want. They are right there. And they've been here the whole time. Oh, shows and goes. The try is scored by Lalay. She held it up at the defensive line and then ducked through and dots it down. A try just before halftime for the Rebels. This is exactly what the Rebels need. We all know now they are so far behind the force, but for morale, this is going to be great for the Rebels. So Lalay scores the try. Let's have another look at it. It was lovely. She just crept across the defensive line and then ducked her head down and crossed untouched. You can see there that she really confused that force player. The force player should have just gone for her. She should have stuck it to her ground, stuck to her player and just tackled her. But she didn't and the Rebels got in and that's exactly what we want. Yep, that's certainly welcome relief for the Rebels and Cormick. Lining up the conversion. And can't quite add the extras. So, at half time here in Cottesloe, it's the force leading the Rebels women 45 points to eight. And Molly, that try just before half time, fantastic for the Rebels, really, considering they're 45, they were 45 points down. Yeah, it was, it was. But you know what? The Rebels were camped up that end of the field for so long that 
it would be expected that they would get that try, and that's what they needed. They just needed to keep sticking to their guns, keep working hard, stick together, work for each other, and we always knew that they were going to get across the line, and this is exactly what they need. The beachside suburb of Cottesloe in WA, Perth, Western Australia, looking at picture this afternoon, and let's take a look at those first half highlights and really we're only going to be talking about one woman molly and it was going to be hotter but this first try from the the force quite outstanding vesnia tapo she was incredible she sure was she got a hand in a, a lot of the first half tries but this is the first of courtney hotter's four tries what about the gas just incredible she is amazing. She's lightning, lightning speed. I don't think anyone was going to touch her. And I think that we're probably going to see a few more tries from her in the second half to come. Yeah, she had spiders on her this afternoon. Second try inside 10 minutes and untouched. She has some serious wheels. Ran it away. She was earmarked as one to watch. Tara Reid scored a try for the Force women, but again, Another one, another look at that Tara Reid try. Here's a look at Hodder's third try coming up. It was a little bit easier for the Western Force winger. She just stepped around the defensive line, and that was where we saw Fungalilo get red carded as well, Molly. It was. She went for the tackle with her feet, and I do not understand for the life of me why she would do that. Red carded straight away, no questions asked. Here's a look at the Rebels' lone try. Loana Lale scoring the try just on half time, so a 45 points to eight deficit for the Melbourne Rebels. Courtney Hodder, four tries. Reed, Talfa, and Kariopa scoring the other tries for the Western Force. Lale with the only Rebels try, and then Cormick. Added a penalty goal, fell five from seven. So it is 45 points to eight. The Western Force leading the Melbourne Rebels. Now we've got a bit of a treat. Rugby.com.au caught up with the star of the Brisbane Tens, Alicia Lafau Fucker Osalea. excited when we first saw her turn up um, at a few club competition sevens games and she pretty much dominated her catch and pass, her contact skills were some of the best I've seen boy or girl. Probably too good to be true we thought at first. I started league first and then what's called my friend, my mum's friend asked me about me playing for the sevens team. And then, yeah, from there on, we won the comp, so we just, yeah, entered other comps, and then I got interested. It was just for fun, really, and then they started to notice, and then they started talking about it, and then, hey, Paco. <laughs> I remember we were watching, I was watching with the UQ7s coach, uh, Reg Taylor, and we were both standing there together, and she just tackled someone, stole the ball, picked the ball up, threw a 15 metre pass, and we were both turned to each other and went, wow, this girl's in the same bracket as someone like a Charlotte or an Emily when they kind of first touched the ball. You could just see natural ability. And we were just like, we have to get this girl involved, we have to get her in our program. She's really been helpful with, um school-wise as well because um, I needed to improve in a lot of stuff and he's helped me through all of it and like build my confidence as well. One of the things that probably strikes you first and foremost is uh, Alicia is a very humble student, humble girl. She doesn't, um, doesn't share a lot about what she does outside of school. Um, she definitely keeps that and, and just gets in to do her business. She's never used it as an excuse. She, uh, she just gets on with the job of, of when she's at school, it's to be at school. And um, you know what she does outside of school, she does trip exceptionally well at. I didn't really imagine myself being in that kind of you know, environment, but then 
you know, was happening, so it kind of scared me because, like, <laughs> you know, playing in front of them, I had to, like, put my, give my all in front of them, so it was a good opportunity for me to, you know, show what I had. that we definitely saw a lot. If you've got a cold one, yeah. As cold as it can be, sorry. No, you're all right. Otherwise, I've got a couple. Yeah. And welcome back here to Cottesloe where the Melbourne Rebels re-enter the field and they've got it all ahead of them. They're 48, five points to eight down. And let's get a word from our sideline eye, Mick Collis. Lexi, if I was the cup... Lexi, if I was the coach, my halftime talk would be do more of that. It was a pretty happy dressing room. Oh, very happy with the uh, dressing room and uh, obviously with the score, uh, we've executed our play and our structure very well in the first 30 minutes. Uh, we probably lost it in the last 10 with them being down to 14. So the message now is get back into what we were doing very well for 30 minutes and then execute that and uh, have the impact players come off the bench and finish off for us. Fantastic. Well, a great first half. All the best for the second half. Thank you. 
there you have it. Impact players coming off the bench. Uh, they've already got a fair bit of impact. Just wait till Rebecca Clough steps on the field. We're back underway in the second half, and Courtney Hodder, first touch in the second half. She gets tackled over the sideline. So the Melbourne Rebels coming back out with a bit of fire in the belly, you have to say. I think so. You know what? I don't think it's all because they work together and they scored that try at the end of the first half. That does a lot for a team, especially when you're losing by such a giant margin. Hotter was running hot in that first half. Four tries. She had spiders on it. Uh, the lineout's no good from the Rebels, so it's a bit untidy from both sides. Tapaway picks it up, but it'll be a scrum to the Rebels to start this second half. Bit of a shaky start to the second half. Nerves again, I think. Uh, Rebels want to get back out there and they want to be able to prove a point to the force to say, hey, we're here. We want to be in this game and we will be competitive. But again, a little bit all over the place at the moment. Hopefully everyone can just slow it down. I think that's the most important thing here is that both teams just slow it right down. Cormick feeds the scrum, goes short side, stepping, but double teamed by the force. Looking to secure it at the breakdown. It's tough going. And now, Coretta. Karorov throws it back inside to Lalay, the try scorer. She gets hit hard though. Cormick again looking for runners. And there's a good carry by Coretta. Masters showing and going. Just poking her head through the line. And Tapawai picked up well. Looking for the high ball was Kararoa. It's been it's play on here at Cottesloe. Here goes Benedict. Brought down just outside the 22. They have the penalty advantage. Lalay, the try scorer, takes another run. It'll be a penalty. Just bobbled it there, Lalay. Lost it forward. Cormick will look for the touchline. As we said, good crowd here as we get a look at Kendra Fell coming off the field. And Zion Tauruma. That's the last one. Comes on and also Alex Bannon on for Ariana Karnachen. So a couple of force replacements at halftime. A couple of good replacements as well. Very experienced. Alex Bannon, originally from Queensland, has now moved over to Perth to join the Western Force side. Uh, strong prop, has been in the Wallaroos training squad as well. So you know she's going to bring a lot to the field now that she's on. Yeah, qualified plumber, Alex Bannon. And also done a lot of surf life-saving in her time, so good to see her trying to make a fist of rugby over in the West. And there she is, Alex Bannon. Got some height about her as well. She is a tall girl. She towers over everybody. 184 centimetres. And yeah, hard working front rower. So we're just having a little bit of a water break here. It is hot today. And a bit of a conference going on. For both sides. Both sides would definitely be feeling it out there. It is a stinker of a day. Coretta just getting some attention. Janetta Coretta has worked hard in this 
first 43 minutes. Line out for the Rebels. What can they do? The line out's no good, so it's popped out for Taufa. Got the offload away. Holiday dummies. And brought down just outside the 22. Tauruma goes into scrum up. Barnes shifts it along to Fairbairn. Now there's a bit of space for the force. Can't find the hands though. And Dupressois hasn't had a lot of action out there on the right wing today. It's all been on the left wing through Courtney Hodder. Puts now for a run. Again, Barnes. And Pomare with a little midfield bomb. Not sure what that was trying to achieve because it's landed in the hands of Masters. A high shot as well, so penalty advantage. And here's Tonumaival. Karara <laughs> shifting the ball along the line. Will come back for the penalty. Western Force really rushing up on the Rebels, Molly, and uh, and really shutting down that little chip over the top they're trying to to affect. That's what I really like about the Western Force in their defensive line is that they move up together as a line, as a unit, and they move up really fast as well. So they're putting a lot of pressure on the Rebels. So, Tara Reid, yellow card for repeated infringements. Yeah, a couple of high shots there from Reed, so a yellow card, and now we'll play 14 on 14. Ten minutes in the sin bin. So we're at a level playing field for the next ten minutes, Molly. We are indeed. This could be exactly what the Rebels need. This may slow the force down a bit, but it is an even playing field now. We're excited to see what happens. Yeah, the Rebels just need to settle themselves a bit. Again, they'd be exhausted having played a lot of that first half with 14. Time in the opposition half, 100% in this second half for the Rebels. Looking for the little tricky plays, these Rebels team, but can't quite get to hand. And now Welty has to go in, and it's been turned over by Cope. Offload to Hodder. She was hit high. Ducked out of a couple of shots there to Courtney Hodder. Pomare stepping, ducking the head through the line, trying to slice through. Told him up. Comes short side, can't get the ball to hand, so it'll be a line out to the Rebels inside the Western Force half. 14 and number five, substitution So, Pauline Dupressois and Gillian Ford coming from the field, and there's Courtney Hodder. Four tries so far coming onto the field. Rebecca Clough, there she is, all the experience in the world, Molly. She is so experienced. She is an incredible player and one of uh, one of the scariest people I think I've ever played against. Actually, she just throws her entire body into this game. What about playing with her? Oh, even better. So much better. <laughs> Lineout's no good for the Rebels. It's popped out on their side. So going for a run is Tony Maidow. Still going, Tony Maidow. Strong run. Beat the first tackle. Homewood. Oh, and straight away there's Clough driving Homewood back. And Clough wins the turnover as well. There's the impact from the Wallaroo. That is exactly what she is known for. She shoots out of that line. She hits like a 
like a ton of bricks and she just keeps going as well. She doesn't stop. And you can see there that she has injured one of the Rebels players, yeah. unfortunately. Case but that just goes to show her dominance on the field. Casey Homewood really clutching at the ribs. It doesn't find touch, so here goes Benedict. Oh, bang! Another big shot. Jasmine Benedict was lined up. And now Tauruma goes for a run. Barnes has to step into scrum half. Cope looking to bat it on. Goes forward, will come back for the first knock on. But just when you thought that the Rebels were starting to gain a bit of momentum, the big D comes from Rebecca Clough. Look at the way she drives the Rebels player back. And then she gets to her feet and she clears one, two, three people out. She is amazing. <laughs> that is quite incredible, actually. Cleared out three players while on her feet. She knows exactly what to do in Iraq. There she is. Having played with her, Molly, she, as you say, leadership and, and strength be a great player to play alongside well those are the two of two of um those are two things that she's known for you know she's she's a leader because she's been around for so long and she's so influential on the field she's been to three world cups so she's got that experience and she's got the knowledge to back it as well um and you know her physicality is what she's known for she is a big powerful second rower and she does not stop. I have seen her with a busted face and there's blood everywhere and she just keeps going. She's unstoppable. She sure is. A bit of respite for the Rebels. This is now the 20th minute, so it's been 20 minutes since the Force last scored. So they scored all their 45 points inside half an hour. Fine! Oh, replacements, more replacements for the force as well. Percenti Grenell comes from the field. Here's Taldema, dummying, and gets brought down in the midfield. Pomato gets the offload off the ground to Clough. Instant impact from Rebecca Clough. Pomare again, looking to shift it along the line. Heavy contact into Annie Fagan. Benedict flew into Annie Fagan. Now another try coming up. And it's Kelly Altbar. She's got two for the afternoon. Just when we thought that the Rebels were mounting something, the Force strike again. The Force will always strike again. They have such good players, and they just know when to hold on, when to work it in the forwards, and then they know when to shift it out to the backs. And their backs are always going to be there as well. Look at that. Great fend. Straight over the line. Yeah, there was plenty of space on that short side, wasn't there? Just the one defender. And Jane Zakia Kereopa, rather. Scoring the try, her second for the afternoon. Again, the 17-year-olds have scored six tries this afternoon for this force team. They are ruling, absolutely ruling this game. Oh, domination, pure domination. Tui Cope lining up the goal kick, taking over from Kendra Fell, who's off the field. Her first Super W cap. Good strike from Tui Cope. And it's over. A lovely conversion. So the score is 52 points to eight. They've broken the half century, the force. Tui Cope, good kick. The Bill Corp Super W starting with a bang in the West. The Force have definitely come out to prove a point today and to let everyone know that they are going to be competitive in this Super W competition. They are not a team to underestimate. It just goes to show the strength of rugby in Western Australia. He's hotter. Trying to step her way through. 
the defence. They've been onto her pretty quickly after she scored her first four tries. Here's Clough running back on the angle. And now Talfa looking to get on the outside. Couldn't. Popped it off the deck, though. Tui Kong out the back of the hand. It's lovely to Kariopa. And Kariopi is staying on her feet nicely. Flat ball to Clough. It just floated forward. It was a lovely ball, in fact. It was too good, unfortunately. The Rebels should count themselves lucky there because there was a lot of disjoint in their uh, in their defensive line as well. And you saw one of them shot up out of the line, which just created these big holes. And when Rebecca Clough got the ball, you can see that she was just aiming for that hole. And if you know, you know if she gets through it, she's going to be unstoppable. So the Rebels really need to fix up their defensive line. Kara Alpa did a good job. Stayed on her feet. So we've still got two and a half minutes, 14 on 14 here at Cottesloe. Build Corp Super W action. Cormick, is it to Kararoa who flings the ball wide, but again it's been coughed up in the midfield by the Rebels. So we'll play the scrum. And you can see here that the Rebels do show a lot of potential with their skill and their ability to move the ball around the field. But what's really letting them down is their, their catching ability at the moment. There's a lot of... You can see here it was a long pass, but her hands were up above her head. She just wasn't looking at the ball. And you know that it was never going to happen. She was never going to be able to catch it. They really have to look after their ball security. Yeah, Jocelyn Davis, as you say, had to... Look up high for that one. <laughs> pressure. Heavy pressure on the force, but it's no good. Clough throws a wild one to Hotter. Running back on the angle. Here goes Courtney Hotter. Oh, wow. She slices through. Courtney Hotter. She's looking for five. Oh, she is hot. Courtney Hotter. Slicing through and scoring her fifth try this afternoon. We knew that she was going to do this. We knew in the second half that she was going to start adding more and more tries to her ever-growing list. That was incredible. And again, we'll go back to the Rebels. And you, um, like I said about their defensive line, it just opened up and created so many holes. Here's another look at it. It was a, an error. Initially from Clough and Tui Coke, but then Hodder just slicing through and scoring the try in the corner. That's quite incredible. She's run over 200 run metres in this game today and scored five tries, mind you, as well. Impressive. I'm definitely impressed. And I think everyone who is watching Super W is going to be extremely impressed with this 17-year-old. Wallaroo of the future, you've got to say. Here comes the kick. It's no good from Tui Cope. So she was player of the tournament in the National School Sevens last year, Courtney Hodder. And seeing all that class this afternoon. She is turning it on. Absolutely turning it on. The star of the future. Just lovely to watch. Just a balanced runner. Scything through. I love the way that she worked her way across the field, trying to find a hole because she knew that she would. So, picked off on the 22 by Katie Barnes. And it's juggled a little bit there by Talfa. Cleaned up though. Hands, there's space on this far side. Here's Kelly Opa getting on the outside. Chips ahead. Chases are coming for the Western Force. It's been bobbled to the back there by Benedict.
kick and the force clean it up. So another chance here for the home side. Fairbairn shifts it along the line. A try coming up. And that's Trilene Pomare scoring for the force. They've got their scoring mojo back, the Western Force side. They do. The girls are back. They're really exploiting that Rebels defensive line. And I'll say it again because there is no defensive line. They are so disjointed. They're all over the place. And the Force are just so fast at exploiting that. They're just getting through all the holes. So can you kick to come? 62 points to eight. An avalanche of points out here in the West. And we've still got 23 minutes to play. You're right, the Rebels defenders just on their heels and really having to track back and the force doing such a good job at turning them around. And I think it comes with a lack of communication in the defensive line as well, because we all know that to have a great defensive line, you need to be able to talk to each other. Who's on your left? Who's on your right? When are you going forward? When are you holding? They really need to start talking to each other in defence if they want to stop the force. Trillian Pomeroy scored the try. Tui Cope added the extras, so the score is 64 points to eight. And the fans here, the Western Force fans in Cottesloe are really getting a show this afternoon. Kickoff's high, it's not the 10, made the 10. Picked up by Outred. So it'll be play on. And the Rebels have turned it over. So pretty clever play there from the Rebels. They have a good game awareness to, to let that ball bounce and let the Western Force come through and pick it up. Cormick kicking to the line. So they have a line out inside the force half. You can see the penalty count has certainly evened up this afternoon after a lot of initial penalties against the Rebels. The Rebels have played a lot of their game though. Up in, uh, up in their end. Yeah, they certainly have. 68%, in fact, has been down the Western Force end. So, a lot of long-range tries and Courtney Hodder scoring five. Here we go again. The Rebels, Tony Movau going for a run. Just need to consolidate here. Tap away, loses it forward. Two knock forwards. So it'll be a, a Rebels feed to the scrum. First knock on coming from the Western Force. Marinessa Tapawai. She is the sister of Ben Tapawai, who won a Super Rugby title with Queensland and a former Western Force player as well. So, so it is a rugby family. It certainly is. There are some famous rugby names out on the field today. So great to see the rugby gene continues in these families. Here go the Rebels. Kararoa shows and then throws the pass out to Benedict, who is wrapped up. And it's a maul now. Very good work from the force. Affected the choke tackle. Tui Cope goes in there and they've turned it over. Great stuff. Tauruma goes short side. And Annie Fagan gets the offload away. Back to Tauruma, but it's been knocked on. So we'll have another scrum to the Rebels. Exciting play. We've just seen how versatile this Western Force team can be in their defensive tactics, Molly. And that's what I was talking about before, communication. You can see that the Force communicate really well when they're in defense because you have one player come in and then another player come in, look, and they talk to each other and they're letting each other know that someone's wrapped up the person. As you can see there, Tui Cope came in. The initial hit was made by Teoroa and yeah, great work from the Force women. Good. Okay, 
gap between shoulders. Referee Sam Jones just laying down the law. We've got some new front rowers on the field, so obviously scrum time has changed up once again. Crouch. Fine. Set. Steady. Get it in. Get it in, please. Sam Jones just hurrying Georgia Cormick up there. Came out the same tunnel, so we'll have another scrum. It's been interesting at scrum time. The Rebels have had to reset their scrum three times. Just the one for the force, so... We've seen clean ball coming back, but the pressure's come both ways, Molly. It has indeed, it has indeed. And, you know, I think fatigue is definitely going to start factoring in here. The force are running all over the Rebels, and if they have to reset, then they've got to reset. You would rather have a safe scrum. Going backwards, but Cormick picks it up. Kataroa in a first receiver, drops it back to Robinson. Kataroa doubles around, but loses it forward. So it's those basic handling errors, again, letting the Rebels side down. It is. You can see that the Rebels are all fingertips as well. They're not, their hands are up and they're catching the ball what looks like on the end of their fingers, which isn't going to work. And they keep making this mistake over and over and over again. So this is something that they're really going to have to work on in the next week leading up to their next game. And the force are putting a lot of pressure on them as well because, again, in the defensive line, they're communicating and they are moving up together as a line. They're putting a lot of pressure on because they're doing it so fast. So, Taylor Waterson comes onto the field for Vicinia Talfa. It's been a great shift for her this afternoon. Talfa, nine carries and a try. So, very good work from her. Here's Taurama. Got the ball away. Here's Puts into the backfield. Fending, streaking away. It'll be another try. For the Western Force, Madeline puts puts it down over the line. Oh, that was nice. I like that one there. Maddie Putts, incredible. She has played for the Wallaroos before. She was over in the 2014 World Cup, and she was out on the wing. So you know that she's got some wheels. Well, she showed a clean pair then and a right arm fend to boot. Let's have another look at it and. She just got on the outside, and then what about the fend here, Molly? The transfer of the ball as well. Lovely to watch. It was. I love when people are able to fend, transfer the ball, and then fend again sometimes as well. Maddie actually has a track background, which also adds to why she's so fast. So she's definitely up there with Hodder with the wheels. I'll tell you what, we have got a great variety of athletes who are now playing in this rugby competition, the Bill Corp Super W in 2018. A great variety of athletes from all different sports, Molly. Well, that's what I like about the sport is that it's so transferable. You can bring girls in from so many different sports and they can excel in rugby union. You know that there's track, uh, there's, there's track athletes out there. There's girls who have come across from basketball, AFL, rugby league, everything. It really does work in their favour when they come into Rugby Union. We're into the 70s. 71 points plays eight. The conversion was good by Tui Cope. And more changes. Tessa Brown on for Meritiana Robinson and Tulia Puller also on the field. There's been a host of changes, in fact. But we're back underway. Oh, heavy. Jacqueline Teo flying into Jago then. Here's the try scorer. Stepping his totem up. And Pomodoy bobbles it, but they get the ball back away. Hotter in there as well, getting involved. Back to totem up. And up towards halfway. Lovely work. Hodder has to go into scrum half. And charging through. A lovely run there from Waterson. Hodder again in at scrum half to Cope. 
just holding the ball up. It's been intercepted though. Here goes Masters. Does she have the legs? She's going for the corner, throws the fend out. Brought down just short of the line. Can't find the offload, the supporting player as well. Masters so close. And Tui Cope did a great job to bring her down. Penalty for the Rebels. Tui Cope not in a good way on the sideline either. And you can tell that Masters does come from the backs because she still has some wheels about her as well. She's so fast. She was so quick to intercept that ball, just put her head down. Cope chased her down and doesn't look like she came off very good from it though. They tap and go. And fighting is Teo. Fighting through the line. Pula goes short side, they shift it along to Masters. She dots it down in the corner. And it's a try. Ashley Masters, what a finish. What a finish. You knew that she was going to get that. It was um, interesting by the force, though, because their defence, they looked like they were communicating quite well, but they ended up sucking themselves in and leaving about five metres on the, on, the, uh, on the short side there, which really exposed them, which Masters just took advantage of and got straight over the line, which is exactly what they should be doing. Well, she created it. She got them the field position, Ashley Masters, and now was great hands. It's probably the first time that those hands have stuck today. What about the finish? Incredible. You can see there that Jaco was the last player and there was five metres free. There was no one there. They were always going to go over. She did well to get the ball down though, did Ashley Masters. It was a heck of a finish. She did. And Cormick looking to add the extras. So their second try of the afternoon. Tough one for Cormick. Hits it pretty well. Had the direction, didn't have quite the distance. So 71 points plays 13. Here's another look at the finish. We'll get a good angle here. Oh, no room to work with, and Masters scores. Lovely play. So Tui Cope has recovered and will stay on the field. That's good news for the force, that's for sure, as they put it deep. It's been picked up by Masters, showing a bit of footwork and getting on the outside. She's proving a real handful now, Ashley Masters, but throws a wild pass back inside, which has been picked off by the force, and they earn the penalty. Masters passing the ball to no one. She should have just held on to the ball, waited for her, waited for her teammates to come over, get over the top of her, secure the ball, and then go again from there. Unfortunately, they've now lost the ball. It's a lovely little in and away for Masters. Great footwork to get on the outside. As you say, she's converted into the front row from the centres in 2018. So, what incredible footwork for a reserve hooker, you got to say. Absolutely. And we, we can see here that she is. She's so fast, she's so strong, and the experience that she brings as well. She just knows when to go. And she's really shown up in this second half when the Rebels need her the most. Not bad there from the force. It finds a bit of turf and Dolorama has to double around and poking her head through the line now. Dolorama. The pick and go short side from Wycliffe. Barnes has to go into scrum half to Tui Cope. Got the ball away to Waterson. The offload was good. And again, Wycliffe having another run. Taurama, a loose pass out to Pomare. 
And here's Rebecca Clough. She only knows one way. The pick and go from Jago. Clough's going to go again. A second time. Charging through. Here's Pomeroy, drops it back inside to Hodder. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me it's Courtney Hodder again. That'll be her sixth try of the afternoon. I tell you what, if there were record books for the Build Corp Super W, she'd be smashing them. I'd say she probably does hold the record. <laughs> for most tries in one game. She's got incredible footwork as well. You can see every time she goes in and there are big defenders in front of her, she really works her magic there with her feet and just gets through and finds that hole. I'll tell you what, Courtney Hodder has had a day out. Lovely draw and pass there from Pomeroy and Courtney Hodder. You don't see that every day. Someone scoring six tries in a game of footy. What a day for the 17-year-old. Probably has to go back to school tomorrow, Molly. She probably does. <laughs> she probably does. But she'll come back with a good story and a lot to brag about, that's for sure. Take the tape, that's for sure, for show and tell. Trillene Pomade looking to add the extras. Taking over from... Tui Cope does so. 78 plays, 13 here in Cottesloe. Six tries, 249 run metres. Look at that. She's breaking the... She is absolutely breaking the stats metre. Andrew, our stats man here, has got RSI putting the stats down for Courtney Hodder. 18 tackle busts. And we still have six minutes to go. I am interested to see what she can do in the final six minutes of this game. Another breakout here for the force. Fairbairn with a nice little run. And here goes Tauruma stepping. She's got some fancy footwork too, but the hands let her down on that occasion. So we'll have a scrum. Five and a half to play, and the Force are putting on a clinic here in Cottesloe. Great crowd here in Cottesloe. The beachside suburb in Western Australia. The water looks lovely as well. Hopefully afterwards there'll be time to duck down there and have a dip. Have a dip, get eaten by a shark, <laughs> nothing to it. <laughs> it is known for its Noah's Ark, that's for sure, this part of the town, but that's all right. We play on. Here go the Rebels. Can they muster something? No, it floats forward for Rebecca Jones. So unfortunate. She was away then, Rebecca Jones. Courtney Hodder, though, out on that wing. She was. The Rebels really shifted that ball quite well, quite seamlessly. It hasn't happened too many times throughout this game, but you can see here there's a nice long pass back. What about the late shot there from Tayroa as well? And yeah, you can see that just floated forward. Crouch. Zion Tauruma. We'll feed the scrum. Looks like Courtney Hodder standing at outside centre. And Tauruma goes short side. Throws the fend out. Oh, that was a heavy contact. They continue to go same way though. Oh, what a run. Into touch though. Taylor Waterson making some good metres. There's time off here. Let's have a listen. Sounds like there'll be a bit of a talking to here for a high shot. We just had a flag out for a high tackle. 
Jane Kataroa just getting some words there from Sam Jones for a high tackle. The flag was out, so it'll be a penalty to the force. Here's a look at it. Totem will go short side. I think you'll find here it's this contact here. Oh, that looked all right to me. I didn't think that one looked too bad. That was a bit of a... I mean, they got the penalty. That's all right. There were no cards given out, so yeah. that's okay. Line ball, you have to say. Yeah, agreed. Any contact with the head at all is treated pretty seriously these days, so... Our man on the touchline was in the best position to see that as the force. Looking to Maul now. Can they add another string to their bow? Wycliffe breaks away. Bomberay again. Tauruma to Bomberay. Changes the point of attack here. And now there's numbers out on the right, but Barnes goes herself. And Tauruma goes same way. Jago with the pick and go. Strong run there from Wycliffe again. Had a couple of big carries, Daryl Wycliffe. Pomeroy stepping, going back into the channel, back into the traffic. Will come back for the penalty. Double tap on the whistle. Let's have another listen. Yellow card. So it'll be Tonomaeval who will sit out the last couple of minutes. So they'll have to play with 13. Try coming up for the force. There's another one. And it looks like Wycliffe will come up with it. That was always going to happen for the force there. Now that the Rebels have only got 13 players on the field, unfortunately for them. Daryl Wycliffe scores the try to take the force into the 80s. Let's have another look at it. And she just used a bit of footwork to come back on the angle and just size really won the day there. It did indeed, it did. But what you notice about the Rebels is that they move forward a little bit, but then they stop and they wait for the players. And if there's a girl that size running at you, you don't want to stop and be on your back feet. You want to be able to keep moving forward so you can hit her with force, with impact, so you can hopefully drive her back or stop her in her tracks. If you're on your back feet, she's going to run straight over the top of you. That's what Daryl Wycliffe did. And it looks like she'll line up to convert her own try a reserve prop taking a kick at goal hits it pretty well oh the crowd tells the story there 85 place 13 daryl wickliffe converts her own try big smile as well coming from daryl <laughs> And so, with just 20 seconds to play, 85 points here today for the Western Force. The Rebels will have to go back and really go back to the drawing board. Cormick gets us back underway. Here goes Barnes. She's been busy all afternoon. Fairbairn got the offload away. They're looking for Hodder. Clough gives it to Hodder now. She pins him, gets the offload away, but it can't find the hands. And it'll be a penalty. She was offside when she regathered that ball, so accidental. For Courtney Hodder. And with no time left on the clock, the Rebels will put it into touch and, and hope that they can win this line out and maybe get something after time's up. We saw them score just before half time. It'd be nice to see them get something before full time, Molly. I would like to see that happen, actually. I think that they fought well this entire game and they've never given up. 
They are so far behind the force, but they've never given up. And like we said, they do find themselves down the force's end a lot of the time. It's just the small things that they need to get right. Turnover from the force. So they'll look for one more. One more, they say. The crowd's asking for one more. Taurama, no, just chips it ahead. Doesn't find touch, though. It's popped up for the Rebels. It's still in play, in fact. The counter-ruck from the force is good. And now Jago kicks it into touch. That'll be full-time. And the home side will be happy. They'll be stoked. The Western Force defeat the Rebels women in this first Bill Corp Super W match. 85 points to 13. And it was six tries by that woman, Courtney Hodder, Molly. What a star. She is a star of the future. I guarantee you, by the end of this tournament, she will have a foot in the door in the Australian team, and rightly so. I think when you score six tries in the first game of the Super W, it definitely does come with a little bit of extra encouragement to get into those sides. High fives all around for this force women's side. They are stoked. And with the Rebels women's side, they fought hard, as you say. But there was a massive golfing class there. There was. They did. They did fight really hard. And you can see that there's just a different in experience as well. You know, when you don't, you don't come from a huge rugby state, uh, but they definitely went out there and they did their best. It's the little things that they really need to work on. Like we said, their ball security, their ball handling especially. Absolutely. You look at the turnovers, and it was 11 turnovers today, and handling errors, quite a few as well. So this is good to see, isn't it? There's some great camaraderie bef between all the teams in the in the national championships and and in this Build Corp Super W. So they're all getting around each other, Molly. Yeah, they are. And this is what the women have always been like. Everyone's quite close. We all know each other from playing against each other for years and years and years. And this does happen a lot after um, after games. You know, we come in, we celebrate rugby. Like, that's one of the big things that we're doing. It's celebrating rugby and what's in front of us right now. Because this Super W tournament, this, this competition is such a big thing for us. And we want to, um, we, you know, we want more exposure. We want more opportunities. And this is it. And the girls are leading the way well, how, how special is it for to be playing on a national uh, broadcast as well molly in front of everyone because uh, that wouldn't have happened with the nationals previously no it's never happened with nationals previously uh, rugby rugby.com did a lot of work with us in the past and they did uh, they did live stream it but this has never this type of exposure especially on fox sports has never been available to the women and it's good to see and more people can know about what we're doing and the skill that we bring to the field. And, and it's a terrific message as well uh, for the girls watching at home. Know that they, they can aspire to this. With you know, there's been there's been big publicity around AFLW around around, around rugby league, but uh, these girls are really leading the way in the Bill Corp Super W. They are, they are. You know, there are a lot of young girls at home who can watch this. And like you said, they can aspire to be like these players. And that's what you want. You want to get more girls interested in this sport because it's a great sport. And this is our pathway now as well. You go, you play club rugby, and then you can hopefully make your way into the Super W, which is now a pathway into the Wallaroos. Well, let's get some reaction from the Rebels. Mick Collis is sideline. Well, well, Jaina, a tough, tough day at the office. Yeah, very tough day at the office with the heat. <laughs> so, but it was a really good game, really good head out for us guys. So, um, in the end, we'll um, go back to the drawing board and work up again. And you, you caught the force on a, on a very good day. I think any team would have struggled against them. Uh, yes, we sure did struggle on a very hot day. But um, meantime, we just have to um, gather around and just um, concentrate on the next game. And you obviously, the red card didn't help, but you must have been happy with the commitment and the attitude of the girls. You didn't stop all day. Oh, no. Um, we actually played our hearts out over there. Uh, we kept on going, even though we got a red card and a yellow card today. But, um, 
it was just an awesome effort by all the other players that came on and I was on the field as well. And so what do you take away from today? Um, what do I take away, or the team as well, is that um, we can lift from this. We can um, build our um, team spirit again and not let this put us down for the next game. Well, Jane, fantastic. It was a great effort on a very hot afternoon and all the best for the rest of the competition. Thank you very much. Yeah, Molly Gray, you hear from Jane Cararoa there that job obviously was made infinitely harder having to play with 14 players for a lot of that match and she did say the heat really impacted them as well so it is quite a hot day there is not much breeze out there so the rebels really did struggle with that weather it's something that they're not used to and that's but that's what they're going to have to get used to now that the super w is in place and that we will be jumping from state to state and and touring around you know weather is something that's going to factor into how the girls play well let's get some more reaction this time from the winning side mick collis is sideline Well, Trini, you couldn't have been any happier with that start for women's rugby in Western Australia or in the Australian competition. Yeah, definitely. I think we're happy with our performance today. Um, it's definitely how we wanted to start. Um, start on the front foot, not behind. So I think we've just got to focus on our next job now. It's done and dusted. Got Sydney next week, so just got to build towards it. It was your first game. Were you surprised at how well you gelled for, the, for your first hit out? Yeah, for sure. I think we did, we lack game time over this side being isolated by ourselves. So that was our first run together, and I think we've done quite well. You talked about some of the young players before the game. Courtney Hodder, would you have expected six tries in her debut? Yeah, I would. She's an exciting player, I'll tell you that. Um, she's just so quick, so hard to control and contain her. She's got agility, footwork for days, so good work on debut. And it certainly was a great individual effort, but from a team point of view, you must be very, very happy with the way everyone did work together. Like right across the park, you were dominant. Yeah, gutsy efforts from the girls, 80 minutes. Not many of us have played 80 minutes before, so for us to get a good, good dominant start, I think we've got to be happy with that. And if there was something you wanted to try and work on for the rest of the season, is there anything in particular that does stand out? Just our continuity, I think, stringing together some phases and um, playing a bit more down that end in their 22. So I think we got stuck a few times in our half and made it a little bit hard for ourselves. I think um, that's something we're going to have to tidy up for next week. We know uh, New South Wales have a strong back three, so we're just going to have to dominate in that part of the field. Well, Trinley, it was a fantastic effort on behalf of all rugby fans. So that was a fantastic spectacle and all the best for next week and the rest of the season. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mick Collis there. And thank you to Trilene Pomeroy. An outstanding effort from the Western Force. 85 points in their first match. That is absolutely immense from the side. Let's have a look at the action. And it was the second half. They just kept going, picked up where they started, Molly. They did indeed. They did indeed. They came out firing in that first half. And you can see here how powerful they are when they're running and their fends and their ball transitions. And they, they just work together so well. And they really let the Rebels know who was boss today. This for mine was the try of the day. Courtney Hodder cleaning up a loose ball and then scything her way through to score in the corner. It was as good as it gets from the young star. And then this one, Pomeroy, the captain, doing it herself. So, and really just managed to keep the phases going. And here's another look at some great hands, Molly. This time, putts with the fan. The transfer of the ball was pretty to watch. She's a Wallaroo. And a referee as well. Here's... A look at Ashley Masters. Great finish from Ashley to score that try. They had a bit of a conference before they awarded it, but it was a wonderful touchdown. And then this, once again, Hotter, her sixth try of the afternoon. I've never seen anything like it on a football field. Six tries by one player. And uh, a real star of the future, Molly. She is indeed. And the footwork that she brings, the agility, she's unstoppable. Daryl Wycliffe scoring, putting the icing on the cake. Here's a look at the score summary. 13 tries to the Western Force women, to the two Melbourne Rebels women. Hodder with six. Kereopa got two. Reed, Taufa, Pomeroy, Putz and Wycliffe all scoring tries. There were 10 conversions. Fell, Cope, Pomeroy and Wycliffe all having a crack. 
and Lalay and Masters scoring the two tries for the Melbourne Rebels. Cormick, none from two, and the conversion gets the penalty. But here's a look at the stats, and the possession really swung in the second half on the side of the Western Force women, but uh, it was really a dominant performance from that home side. Time in the opposition 22, Molly, the Melbourne Rebels really spent a, a, a big chunk of time in the opposition 22. They did, didn't they? They really did. And I think that just shows promise as well. They know how to get there. It's what they do once they're there. Absolutely. That's what they need to figure out. And and they, you know, they spent so much time. So it's, it's all about just working together, getting all your phases right. And I think just communicating and playing more together that they, they can really start to execute some good attacking phases an advantage line stat like that 80 percent is world class from any side uh, so let's take a look at the results in new south wales getting up over queensland last night at suncorp stadium the western force women well they've go to the top of the build corp super w with an 85 point win over the rebels here's a look at what's to come next week the Brumbies will take on Queensland on Saturday from GIO Stadium in Canberra and then Sunday live from Allianz Stadium the New South Wales women take on the Western Force a top of the table clash in the Build Corp Super W we're looking forward to that one Molly we are indeed we know that New South Wales are very clinical in the way that they play and they are the uh, over reigning champions but Western Force after the performance that they put on today they're strong they're powerful and they've got hotter they do have Courtney Hodder, six tries to that young 17-year-old superstar, 85 points to 13. Thank you very much, Molly Gray, for your company. Thank you to Mick Collis, who was also on the sideline, and thank you for your company at home. The Western Force, victorious here at Cottesloe.